And we consider, of course, that Islam is the culmination of the progression of the monotheistic faiths. It embraces the best of that which is in Judaism and in Christianity and culminates with the message of Muhammad. And we ask peace and blessings on all of the prophets, and we make no distinction between them or among them in our faith. But isn't it true in the Islamic religion, Mr. Carew, that, that women have to walk around with masks over their face, that you can't drink, you can't smoke, you can't dance, you can't listen to rock and roll, that you have to do everything? I'm, 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 you know, I'm from a Christian nation. I'm yes. Christian. Uh, why is this religion so intense? I mean, do the Islamic, uh, those people who live, believe in Islam think that theirs is the only true religion? No, they certainly do not. Uh, they uh, have, uh, we don't have time, I don't think, to go into it in depth. But Islam respects and revers the monotheistic faiths and considers the followers of Judaism and the followers of Christianity yeah. as brothers and sisters under the one true God of us all. The AM, Livonia, Detroit, have a safe and happy holiday season. It's time now for the American Muslim Mosque of the Air, the Voice of Islam, with your host, the Reverend Imam Mohammed Adib Hussein Karub. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be upon you and the mercy of Allah, the mercy of God, and His blessings. And welcome to one and all on this, another edition of the American Muslim Mosque of the Air, brought to you every Sunday at this time from this radio station, WCAR 1090, on the AM dial. We, our listeners are increasing, alhamdulillah, all praise to God, as we seek to interpret this little known and little understood faith of Islam and correlate that which is intrinsic within it and that which makes it worthy of being called a sister religion to its predecessors, Judaism and Christianity. Let's begin by invoking the name of God, Allah's name, on these proceedings. As we say, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in the name of God, in the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, we begin every endeavor according to Islamic law, by invoking God's name on that endeavor, therefore reminding us, and thereby reminding us, my beloved listeners, one and all, reminding us very humbly, but very forcefully, that that which we are about to do, or upon which we are about to embark, should be legal and should be lawful. You see the, uh, the uh, meaning there, please. Let me say, too, before I... Uh, go any further, that I wish a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to our brothers and sisters of the Christian faith, the dominant religion in these great shores, the greatest country on earth, the United States of America, and also let me say Happy Hanukkah to our brothers and sisters of the Jewish faith of Judaism. God bless all people, and we hope and pray that the blessing of God will envelop all of mankind as certain segments take this occasion to celebrate that which is within their faith. It is a time for love, it is a time for peace, it is a time for harmony, and I believe the way to honor Jesus, son of Virgin Mary, and the way to honor Moses, the son of Imran, and the way to honor Muhammad, Ibn Abdullah, and all of them be peace, is to establish peace on this earth and let there reign in the hearts of mankind a feeling of true brotherhood for one man and from one man to his brother man. I believe this is the greatest honor for any prophet or any messenger that can be accorded by man. And I remind myself and you that if you seek truly to honor, let's say, Jesus, son of Virgin Mary, on this occasion, then help the poor, help the needy, give of that which God has given you. Remember, in Islam, you did not make that on your own. God allowed you to make it. It was from his provisions, from his bounty, from his munificence, and from his grace. Our number here at the station if for a call-in question is 525-1090. And you may call us at our office during the week, 868-2266. 
if you prefer that. We wanted to mention also in connection with the uh, with uh, that which I just mentioned, the Merry Christmas season, the Happy New Year that's coming up for the Christian calendar, and of course the uh, Hanukkah uh, that is gaining momentum every year. I didn't used to hear much about Hanukkah when I was young, and uh, some rabbis have explained to me that it is a very insignificant and minor holiday on the Judaic uh, calendar, but it seems to be increasing in importance and parallels now uh, Christmas almost as we see signs right here in the studio i'm looking at a sign now as i'm talking to you on this very cold morning merry christmas and under it is happy hanukkah so they've joined that however i would like to say one thing before i get off this subject and that is i noticed that the most people of christian faith are decreasing their use of the word merry christmas in deference to people who do not believe in christmas uh... mainly our brothers and sisters of the jewish faith in this country so they are saying, in deference to these uh, uh, Jewish people, they say to them, Happy Holidays. They don't say Merry Christmas. They don't seem to take pride in that. However, I see conversely, if we turn the coin over, that the Jewish people are saying Happy Hanukkah. They're not embarrassed or ashamed to mention Hanukkah. So why is it the Christian people are decreasing in the use of Merry Christmas and are very timidly saying Happy Holidays and Seasons Greetings? Why don't the Christian people say Merry Christmas forthrightly, just as the Jewish people are saying Happy Hanukkah? And I wish both of those much happiness and uh, God's bliss. But for our part, as Muslim people who honor and revere the, uh, the uh, prophet Isa in Arabic, Jesus, son of Virgin Mary, we believe in his virgin birth. We believe that God took him bodily at the time when he was under that the hostility and the attempt to take his life by those transgressors, uh, those heinous transgressors. Uh, I will go into that next week, inshallah, God willing, correlating that which is in the Holy Quran concerning this great prophet and messenger of God to whom a book was revealed, and he is no less and no other than Jesus, son of Virgin Mary, on him be peace. But for our part, as I began to say as Muslims, this is a time for us, and for brothers and sisters of Christianity, and for brothers and sisters of Judaism, if you will allow me. I hope I'm not being too bold in saying this. I remind myself, and all of these I've mentioned, that now is the time to make peace between husband and wife, between parent and child, between brothers and sisters. All of these peace should be concentrated on in honor of these great days. Aren't these great days for the Jewish people? Aren't these great days for the Christian people? Aren't these great days for the people of Islam whose Holy Quran contains for all to see the story, unadulterated, unadulterated story, undiluted story, and from which nothing has been detracted of the birth of the travail, of the departure from this earth, of Jesus, son of Virgin Mary. It's there in the Holy Quran. I invite everyone, Muslim, Christian, Jew, atheist, to open that holy book and read those words of God that with which, with, uh, which no one has tampered. No one has tampered or touched or changed these words since they descended on the noble heart and soul of the Prophet Muhammad ibn Abdullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, on him be peace. So if you have anger or enmity or hostility or rancor or bitterness between your brother, now is the time to say, if you are Christian, you can say to him in honor of Jesus, son of Virgin Mary, I make peace with you. If you are Jewish, you can say in honor of Moses, the son of Imran, I make peace with you. If you are Muslim, now is the time during these the holy days to say to your wife, to your child, to your husband, to your neighbor, to your friend, I make peace with you in the name of God and in honor of every prophet and every messenger. As Muslims, we make no distinction between those prophets and messengers. We turn our faces, we turn our countenances to God in submission and say to him, unto you is our inevitable return. This is the Islamic creed. This is the Islamic law. This is the scripture of Islam. And I wish you all Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Holidays to everyone. 
Let's turn now a little bit, if we can, because it is a season when we should be thinking about the orphan, the widow, the bereft, the bereaved, the uh, indigent, the lonely. This is a time when our hearts go out to these people, and it seems to be more pronounced than other times of the year. And I know that for many years, and maybe many centuries, my brothers and sisters, people have called upon other people. Leaders have called upon people. Priests and rabbis and ministers and imams have taken... Uh, the opportunity afforded by these holidays to say we should exhibit the spirit of kindness and brotherhood not just at Christmas time, not just uh, at Ramadan time, not just at Eid al-Adha time, but uh, throughout the whole year. Now that's nice to say, but somehow it never comes to fruition. We seem to be unable to motivate ourselves, to move ourselves, to do good deeds, at least in the uh, same uh, propensity, you might say, as we do in uh, specific instances such as Christmas and other holidays. Therefore, in connection with this, the Holy Quran, the first of these monotheistic faiths to concern itself with the widow, with the orphan, with the uh, plight of woman, with the status of woman, let's say, when, uh, when this Quran was revealed, Christianity did not concern itself with that, and under Christian law, of course, as we well know, reading those books by Christian scholars, they considered the woman to be made from fire, much less than man, and the man made from clay, and under those same Christian laws, which the, somehow or other they don't mention now, they felt that the woman would have one heck of a time to get into heaven. She was so far below the man in status and in stature and in God's eyes. So Islam came to elevate the woman and to also elevate every other human being, black, white, red, yellow, and brown. You never heard Islamic law say all black people sit in the back of the bus. You can't hear that because there is no color line. There is no color distinction. There is no color differentiation in Islam. But where do we see anything written giving credit to Islam or to Muslim people for never putting up a sign, colored drinking fountain, white drinking fountain. Colored lavatory, white lavatory. That's unheard of and unknown in the Islamic religion, unheard of and unknown in the Islamic lands. Yet under Christianity, this is what happened right here in our own beloved United States of America, right into this century, well into this century. I'm not talking about the old days. I'm not talking about the Salem witch hunts when they used to throw the woman into the, Saint, uh, the Charles River in Massachusetts to see if they'd sink and if they were part and parcel of the devil. I'm talking about this era we live in. I was already a, a grown adult when they were still having black people sit in the back of the bus in Christian America. I think that was a form of terrorism. I think it was maligning the faith, and I think it maligned the proponent of the faith, Jesus, son of Virgin Mary. So we should admit and confess to our errors, and we should turn to God in repentance, all of us together as Americans, whatever our faith, for this guilt, for this crime we have perpetrated upon an innocent people because of color because of that barrier that we erected ourselves. God never sanctioned it. God never called for it. God will judge us only by the good deeds we achieve during our time on earth. We say it over and over and over again, my brothers and sisters. It's good to think of that now. And let's read a little bit from the Holy Quran now concerning the orphan. You don't see much about the orphan in the uh, earlier books. I am sorry to say, but I'm very proud and happy to tell you that Islam came to rectify that which had been neglected and to impose and to pronounce and to lend impetus and concern to that which had been left behind by other religions. That's why we are the complete faith. We are the complete religion. We are the only religion. Islam, I'm talking about I-S-L-A-M. We are the only religion that can embrace our own scriptures, and that which descended before us on previous prophets and messengers, for we already have said we believe in all of them. You see the beauty of Islam? Let's read now from the Holy Quran. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. وَآتُوا الْيَتَامَ أَمْوَالَهُمْ وَلَا تَتَبَدَّلُوا الْخَبِيثَ بِالطَّيِّبِ وَلَا تَأْكُلُوا أَمْوَالَهُمْ 
الى اموالكم انه كان حوبا كبيرا to orphans this is god talking to us now listen to me please to orphans restore their property when they reach their age their age of majority nor substitute your worthless things for their good things and devour not their substance by mixing it up with your own for of a certainty this is indeed a great sin and god has spoken truth sadaqallahu alazim you will find nothing to compare with this brief verse that i just read in any previous scripture open the bible with all love and respect to the bible open the torah with all love and respect to the torah and you will find nothing to compare with just a simple verse concerning the orphan and god's exhortation to mankind to be kind to this person and who was the orphan that exemplified being bereft and bereaved during his time on earth he was none other than our own beloved prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam whom god saw fit to try with this condition you see that our own prophet was an orphan and in honor of that status that god accorded him much earlier than uh, the ministry that was to follow my brothers and sisters we should be kind to the orphans if we are in charge of their wealth says this verse we should not cause it to decrease but only to increase we should not change that let's say that we have adjoining fields if our fields didn't produce good grain we might be tempted to say your field didn't uh, produce good grain instead of mine and let the loss be to the orphan instead of to my field and to my uh, harvest you see the temptation there and god forbids it in no uncertain terms you see this this is the condition that god caused to change in the hearts of men yet 1400 years passed after the revelation of these verses concerning the equality of mankind concerning that which god did dictate to his prophet to be disseminated to all of mankind and yet our brothers and sisters on these beautiful shores the united states of america i'm talking about failed to open those glorious pages of the quran to heed that which god had caused to be delivered to his prophet if the christian people remained in as uh, as christians maintained their christianity they are welcome to it we live in peace and harmony with all brothers and sisters if only they had said we will borrow from your quran at least this exhortation this dictum this commandment concerning god's directive to his prophet that all my people the black the white the red the yellow and the brown are equal in my eyes and they can only exceed over one another in the degree of piety or kindness or good works that they achieve or attain you see god's rule you see his criterion and yet they refuse to read it they refuse to look at it they refuse to admit to it and they refuse to implement it worst of all i'm sorry to say it was there to be used it's like having some jet plane available to you to uh, to move you to transfer you from one area to another at lightning speed and with safety and you insisting upon riding the mule and this is what one of the uh, mistakes we made as a nation and god forgive us all we are all guilty brothers and sisters every one of us as americans are guilty and every one of us is called upon individually and collectively never to repeat that sin that crime against one segment of the population and cause it to be remembered also so that so that it should not be repeated let's see what we can turn to now as i said next week we'll uh, in honor of christmas we'll be reading and uh, explaining and uh, something concerning the christian uh, the uh, faith as it relates to islam christianity and islam sister faith as we say every week at this time and including judaism also but however the difference is i should say that i think and not wait till next week the difference is we accept jesus son of virgin mary under islamic law as a mighty as a major prophet as a mighty and a major messenger and we of course believe and adhere to his virgin birth from our mother mary may god be pleased with her our brothers and sisters of jewish faith however reject all of these precepts out of hand 
They reject Jesus, son of Virgin Mary. They call him an imposter. They reject his mother. They call her a harlot and a woman of the streets. And they reject that which Jesus said descended upon him, the gospel, the Holy Bible. So uh, we would have to say at this time that we can only compare, I think we'll focus on the affinity between Christianity and Islam, at least in the, uh, in the story of Jesus, son of Virgin Mary, on whom be peace. Let me also touch upon the declaration of the faith that tells us a lot, I'll tell you as Muslims, brothers and sisters, but if you're a Christian and Jew listening to me, you may understand something here from this uh, very short declaration that would explain uh, very, very carefully and very sublimely, let me say, the creed upon which the Muslims' faith and belief rests, and that is, وَأَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله. They, those are two sentences, my brothers and sisters, and they say, I bear witness and I testify that there is no deity except God, except Allah, the only one without partner, and I bear witness that Muhammad is his servant and his messenger. Now, when we say that, you say, well, doesn't that sound like the declaration of the faith with the addition of a couple of words? Yes, basically that is the declaration of the faith. That is the creed of Islam. That's a tawheed factor in Islam. We associate nothing and no one with God. So when the Christian comes to us and says we associate Jesus, son of Virgin Mary, the mighty prophet with God, we say in Islam that violates the basic premise. No one is comparable to God. God selected these prophets, including Jesus, son of Virgin Mary, including Muhammad ibn Abdullah, and both of them be peace. God selected them as his servants to disseminate his message and to implement on earth with their example that which he caused to be revealed. You have that, please? So under Islamic law, we would not send a divine person. God would not send a divine person to implement that which he calls upon humans to do or to emulate. You see it? We would turn on the judgment day to uh, God Almighty and say, we could not do what you taught us to do on the lips of those prophets and messengers. They were divine. We are human. Allow us to enter into heaven without penalty. Allow us to enter into heaven without condition. O master of all, you sent us someone divine we could not imitate we could not emulate, we could not aspire or hope to imitate. And God, in His mercy, in His grace, would usher us into heaven. However, my brothers and sisters, God did not send divine to be emulated. He sent humans to be emulated. This is Islam talking to you, so that you understand, my brothers and sisters. I'm not trying to make you all Muslim. You are free to follow the path you choose in the worship of God. This is also Islamic law. You have your religion, I have mine, says the Holy Quran. Go in peace and with God's love. But we must uh, always accentuate, my brothers and sisters, the fact that we are called upon to emulate that which Muhammad did during his time on earth, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because... For that very reason, because he was human, because he came from the womb of the woman, because he had an earthly mother and an earthly father. Therefore, what he did, we can hope to do. We can hope to imitate. We can hope to emulate. You see the, uh, the difference there? That is one of the differences. We have many, many similarities we will touch upon next week, of course. But we should also confess and admit courageously to differences that lie within the faiths and then tell our brother and sister of another faith you may follow God and worship him the way you choose but I ask only one thing of you my brother Jew I ask only one thing of you my brother Christian and I ask only one thing of you all other faiths and religions and that is that at least we begin at one prominent place at one important juncture and Islam calls upon all to admit and confess to the worship of the one God of us all, regardless of our color, regardless 
of the path we have chosen as we march towards him. This is Islam. At least that's it in a nutshell. Uh, we'll have a lot of time, I hope, next week to go into that. Also, brothers and sisters, from the Holy Quran, the ninth surah in the 71st verse, we will read, وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتُ بَعْضُهُمْ أَوْلِيَاءُ بَعْضٍ I have touched upon that a moment or two ago concerning our concern and care for humanity, for our brother and sister, regardless of their faith. We're talking about anyone, regardless of color, regardless of faith. We are called upon to give of that which God has given to that destitute person, to the indigent, to the lonely, to the bereft, to the bereaved, to the poor, to the needy. In this verse, I should read it in English before I forget, the believing men and believing women are protecting friends of one another. You see that? If you see your brother doing wrong and you are a believing person, it is incumbent upon you. It's your duty. It's your sacred duty, let me say, to go to that brother and kindly say you are following the wrong path. Now, you're not supposed to or you don't have to take chains with you or a sledgehammer to, uh, to make your point to that brother. You are called upon by Islam, by God Almighty, to call his attention to the error of his ways, but do it kindly, do it gently. You remember last week we read that verse in the Holy Quran that speak to each other, talk to each other in ways that are gentle and kind, in ways that are best. This is Islam, the gentle religion, the religion of submission. Don't believe this junk you've been seeing since you were a little tiny boy or girl concerning Islam and the sword and the uh, hor horrific ways they, uh, they used. Islam is a religion of peace and submission. It served the purpose of other peoples, of other locales, geographic locales, to say that about Islam, to further their own worldly ambitions, their own aggrandizement. You know that, and I know that. Everyone knows it now. We are living, thanks to God, in an enlightened age. Islam is the religion of peace and of harmony between man and man and between man and God. So in Islam, we do not say, mind your own business. Remember, we touched upon that. We go to our sister and say, you are walking the path of error, the path that will result in you being in perdition, of you being on the wrong path on this earth and on the wrong side of God on that judgment day. Same applies to anyone, whether it's your blood relative or whether it's your friend. But remember, God says believing men and believing women. He used the word twice. Believing men, believing women are protecting friends of one another. Therefore, every act we do on the face of the earth, listen to me now carefully, please, should be preceded should be preceded by belief in God, by belief in His Scriptures, and then the action means something. Action without faith is hollow and empty and meaningless, my brothers and sisters. Therefore, in Islam, we are a faith, we are a religion, we are a creed that calls upon the adherent to profess his belief and then to act upon that belief. You got me? There is no monasticism in Islam. There is no celibacy in Islam. There is no sitting on a high mountaintop in Islam looking down upon the world and saying, I worship God only. I deal with nothing and no one on earth. That is not Islam. You have to get down into the trenches if you want to be worthy of being called Muslim. First establish your belief, then put that belief to work. Believe that you should do good, then go down and do good. This is what God means. You have to have faith and action. For any other faith that calls upon its people to isolate themselves, to divorce themselves from worldly pursuits in the worship of God, we say it is a deficient scripture, it is a deficient mentality, and we say it with all love and with all respect. Don't forget you are responsible for your brother, you are responsible for your sister as a believing Muslim. Then subsequent to that, you are responsible, my brothers and sisters, as a believing person. I believe our time is just about up. I will take this uh, opportunity to wish you again uh, the very best for the holidays and say uh, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. May God's peace and God's blessings envelop you.
You have been listening to the American Muslim Mosque of the Year, the voice of Islam, heard every Sunday at 10 a.m. on WCAR, 1090 on your AM dial. You may call Imam Karub at 868-2266. Once again, that number, 868-2266. Or write P.O. Box 2544, Farmington Hills, Michigan, 48333. The preceding program was sponsored in part by the American Muslim Mosque of the Air. Get motivated to change. Wednesday mornings at 9 with Carolyn J. Michael. WCAR's psychotherapist in residence. For the times in your life, you know you need to change. You need to understand. And you need direction. You need Carolyn. Hi, I'm Carolyn J. Michael. Join me Wednesdays at 9. Psychotherapist Carolyn J. Michael. Wednesday mornings at 9. Exclusively on WCAR. Welcome to the Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran Synod Radio Hour. Every Sunday morning at 10.30, churches of the Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran Synod invite you to join them in worship. Services are coming to you this morning from the chancel of Lola Park Evangelical Lutheran Church in the center of Redford Township. Resident pastor at Lola Park Lutheran Church is the Reverend Edward Zell, who has occupied this pulpit for over 40 years. And now we urge you to join the worship already in progress. Father, and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Word of God before us on this third Sunday in the season of Advent is again found in the Old Testament in the book of Deuteronomy, where in the 18th chapter we hear these words beginning at the 15th verse. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me, unto him ye shall hearken, according to all that thou desirest of the Lord thy God in hope.